Thank you very much, Mr. President. Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations. Mr. President, thank you for convening this high-level meeting of the General Assembly. And congratulations to the, His Majesty, the custodian of the two holy mosques, for drawing attention to the World Conference on Dialogue held in Madrid last May. In that conference, their majesties, the King of Saudi Arabia and the King of Spain, brought together Jews, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, and representatives of other religions in the hope of promoting understanding and tolerance among followers of the world's faiths. This is also the hope for this meeting here in New York. The Philippines fully supports this initiative because we take a great interest in promoting world peace and in encouraging greater cross-religion exchange. Allow me at the outset to introduce draft resolution number A stroke 63 stroke L24 entitled Promotion of Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, Understanding and Cooperation for Peace, tabled jointly by the Philippines and Pakistan and co-sponsored by about 60 states. This draft resolution emerged as a consensus text after a series of consultations. Among the salient points of the resolution is the affirmation that mutual understanding and interreligious dialogue constitute an important part of the alliance of civilizations and of a culture of peace. The resolution encourages the promotion of dialogue among the media from all cultures and civilizations. It emphasizes that everyone has the right to freedom of expression. It also affirms that the exercise of this right carries with it duties and responsibilities necessary for respect of the rights or reputation of others, protection of national security or of public order or of public health or morals. The resolution also requests for the proclamation of a UN decade for interreligious and intercultural dialogue, understanding, and cooperation for peace. I commend the resolution for adoption at the close of our plenary meeting tomorrow. This will demonstrate once again our solidarity for the promotion of interfaith dialogue as a powerful aid to ensure durable peace worldwide. The resolution is especially relevant to the United Nations under the leadership of His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, because for the first time in UN history, the Secretary General has issued a report on interreligious and intercultural activities. Likewise, the UNESCO works on interreligious dialogue. Mr. President, regrettably, the story of faith has too often been twisted into a source of despair and destruction among peoples and nations. There are those who wish to instigate religious war. There are those who use faith to divide rather than unite us. They camouflage their evil designs by invoking religious prejudice in the hope of heightening a clash of civilizations. In this era of propaganda on the clash of civilizations, we must especially pursue broader interfaith dialogue to promote solidarity. Our challenge is to redeem the true meaning of our faith if we are to truly bring peace and prosperity to the world. We must make this a challenge, an opportunity to forge religious understanding. But we must not mistake tolerance and understanding of other faiths and belief systems as a blank check for abuse. We will never accept violence cloaked in religion by anyone at any time. Mr. President, the Philippines has actively advocated interfaith dialogue. Interfaith dialogue 
is an official policy of the Philippine government. It is also a historical truth among our diverse peoples and beliefs. Faith is ingrained in the lives of our people. It is a primordial seed of humanity. It offers hope, confidence, courage, and commitment to make a better global neighborhood. As we integrate interfaith understanding in development policy, it becomes more effective in resolving conflict. Our archipelago, 